Xbox, in case you missed it, did have a show this morning. It was their partner showcase. I mean, they did a good job of, of not like screwing up the expectations, to be clear. I think they balanced it pretty well. So, you know, the whole point is it's a developer partner preview. So it's not like an Xbox Studios thing. This is specifically people they are working with. And so it was a lot of remedy. There were actually some announcements, like some actual new stuff. Um, of course, a, a look at the expansion for Alan Wake 2. And, you know, it looks like Alan Wake 2. It's really trippy and bizarre and creepy and spoopy. So that's a thing. You can see the, the monster reveal here. Blah, 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 blah. Look at that. Oh, baby. Um, very Control-esque. It's got the same vibe, you know? But they say that it is coming to Xbox Series X and S. And PC. It doesn't look like it's uh darker tone and horror elements to Alan Wake 2 second expansion. I thought I already of had a darker House, tone, honestly. Exclusively on Xbox Wire. So Xbox Wire is apparently like a new big thing they're launching. Or maybe it's always been a thing and I just haven't been aware of it, but it's like a a marketing funnel that you can get into. But after that, they showcase this. Now, this was one of the most surprising things. I got an email just after they did this or a DM or something from a member of their team who was like, ooh, check this out. Basically, they're riding on the high of Silent Hill 2 and they're coming out swinging with their own original IP from Bloober Team. And I mean, you can see it's in-game footage and cinematics. They are playing chess to begin with and that already gets me very excited. The board is set up correctly which again, already is insane. I will say there is one weird thing I will point out and I wanna know if any of you guys notice it about the about this. Maybe it's not weird. I, I thought it was a really good detail. It's probably just like a cinematic choice to begin with, but I thought it was actually like, oh, maybe they actually have some chess players in their, in their midst. Uh, that's funny. So you notice the lady is playing with her right hand and she's playing white, right? And the person in the spacesuit is playing black and is moving all their pieces with their left hand. Now, why is that significant? Well, in chess tournaments, the player who's playing with the black pieces gets to pick which side the clock goes on. So if you're right-handed, you'll often put the clock on the right side of the board, or in this case, closest to the camera, so that the black player's right hand can hit the clock more easily as they're playing. And then the white player, if they're right-handed, has to reach across. It's a small little distinction, but it's it's just a little, a little thing. Black gets to choose which side the clock goes on. So when I saw them put this here, I was like, oh, black's gonna be playing with the right hand. That doesn't make sense. Black would have put it, but no, they actually have black playing with the left hand. So boom, useless info. Yes, but there you go. There you go, now you have it. It is a beautiful trailer though. They seem to have like really upped their production value since the medium. And granted, this is like cinematic. So the possibility of a lot of this being pre-rendered is pretty high, but you can see they have a section right up here where they show some certainly like in-game stuff. Come on. Little fast forward. It's called Kronos, the new dawn. And it is very surreal and crazy and wacky. Right here, you can see the in-game footage. Looks really solid. Honestly, when I first saw this, I thought it was gonna be like some, cause like I came into the stream while this trailer was playing. So I came in like right here. So I didn't see that it was from Bloober Team, but I was like, is this some sort of weird um, Returnal? spin-off or sequel or something. I was like, why is that at an Xbox show? But then it was revealed to be Kronos. But it is nonetheless interesting to see that they're doing their own IP. And I mean, there's not a better time to do it. They're riding pretty high on the success of Silent Hill 2, but they're having to pay royalties, I'm sure, to uh, Konami. So might as well put out your own thing and make some money there. They showed some of this stuff. This is like their... their I forget the name of it already. Blind Fire. Early access available today. Honestly, it looked to me like a VR game, but maybe it's got a lot more. This was like one of the most outrageous things I saw, which we knew this was coming, but... Yakuza is just insane. <laughs> You're about to see 
the the sequel to Black Flag you didn't realize was coming. So like, look at this. ヤクザ scratching the pirate itch was not on my bingo card for this year but that's the thing with Yakuza is like you can just never take anything for granted. <laughs> they will blow your mind with crazy wild stuff you never saw coming. And I admire it. I admire it. You know, it's it's pretty wacky and crazy. So that's a thing that's coming. Yeah, it's like a dragon pirate Yakuza in Hawaii. And it's coming in February. So, uh, ooh, they actually changed the release date a tad just a tad so now i'm sure that was just to avoid the capcom overlap with um monster hunter but now we have i believe it goes i think the first game is on the 11th and that is kingdom come deliverance 2 ac shadows on the 14th three days later avowed comes out i think the 21st as well maybe the 18th but it comes out right around this time as well like a dragon we have uh, Monster Hunter coming out, and isn't there one more coming? Civ Seventh is is or Civ Seventh Civ Seven is on the eleventh. I feel like there's one more. I feel like there's one more. Maybe not. Yeah, I'm broke AF. Yeah, dude, we all are gonna be after February. I'll tell you what, we're all gonna be so broke. Um, yeah, Avowed is coming out, and it feels like there's no hype for it. I mean, there's there's intrigue with it, but the thing with like a lot of of game pass titles for one is that you don't really need that excitement from xbox's perspective like they they of course want you to be excited for the game but they don't need you to be like so crazy hyped that you're pre-ordering it and doing stuff like that they, like as long as you play it when it boots up um, or when it releases and you boot up game pass then they're happy but they don't need like crazy pre-order numbers in order for it to de be deemed a success. And I have a, a sneaking suspicion that they're just trying to get this out the door so that Phil can have them do a Fallout game. It would just, it makes so much more sense than having them do some random other stuff. Like so much more sense for real. This was also cool. We got the reveal of a game I've been hotly anticipating. I've talked about this in previous stream segments and stuff. It is based around hand-drawn animation. It's an FPS um, themed around 1940s, like detective cartoons and the, the detective noir style of thing. How it plays, who knows? I, I don't actually know if they've given anybody access to play the game. They've done like preview videos with IGN, but I don't know if they've let anybody play it. So I hope that this translates to decent gameplay as well. And it's not just like looks good in a video, but in practice, it's not that fun. So I'm, I'm hopeful that it, it pans out, but you can see they still just have 2025 as the release date, but they're at least putting out more trailers. It doesn't seem like it's stuck in development hell or anything. So they're doing that. Beyond that, we got another look at, uh, well, a look at Subnautica 2. Ailes Drobeck is now a member. Ailes, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, in case you guys are not aware, members now have members only videos. So if you want to see me do like a deep dive onto this creature that I am putting into my D&D &D campaign, I'm running for some friends. You can go be a member and check it out because there's that. So consider yourself uh, warned that that's a thing. But yeah, if you're a big fan of Subnautica, there's more. And it does seem to suggest co-op. There's two characters working with each other. So it wouldn't surprise me if that's kind of what they're doing. And then the spooky. This was just a good shot. I mean, look at this. That's just a good shot. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> that's awesome. After that, we got 
a clip from Donkey. Even the shadow of a shadow can cast a shadow. It's coming to Xbox. Uh, so if you have not played Animal Well, then it is available on Xbox now. So there you go. Then there's some, some anime stuff, Eden Zero. I'm not familiar with it. Uh, this, I believe, is the game from the team that splintered off after Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I'm pretty sure this is that game. Uh, we've looked at it a couple times just in little glances, but it's sort of a merging of some of the mechanics of AC Odyssey, but they wanted to do it with like a mixture of Shadow of the Colossus also where you fight these gigantic colossal creatures. And so to be clear, it's not a Ubisoft studio, but it's a lot of veterans from Ubisoft Quebec, I want to say. Uh, maybe Ubisoft Montreal, but I think it was Ubisoft Quebec. So it, it seems, you know, interesting at the very least. I'm still not totally sure how it will play out, but it is coming to Game Pass. So can't be that mad about it. Um, coming to Game Pass, you can at least try it. This one looked really creepy and crazy. People were joking in the live stream chat that this was Elder Scrolls 6, that they were shadow dropping a trailer. I hate to be this guy. If you think that Elder Scrolls 6 will look anything like this, you are into, I'm, you're gonna be so, so sad. <laughs> I'm just warning you. I think they even just said that they're gonna be using the creation engine too. So they're not even like pretending as though it's gonna be a big upgrade from the Starfield tool set. So, I just want to like, don't get your hopes up because you'll just be disappointed. Keep level expectations or low expectations and whatever we get, you'll be a lot, you'll, like you'll be pleasantly surprised. But this is apparently like a medieval souls born inspired extraction game. So you're running through, I don't know if it's going to be like roguelike levels and stuff that are randomized where you go through and collect loot and then level up that way. I don't know exactly what the structure looks like, but I mean, obviously I think we would all agree that the production value seems pretty high. It it looks really, really good and gameplay looks pretty tight as well, which kind of makes or breaks these kinds of games. But this is one I'm going to be watching closely because this seems really interesting to me. I'll give them credit. Like if, if uh, this is what Elder Scrolls 6 looks like, I think we'll all be very excited, but I think I think we all know that this this probably is not <laughs> what it's going to look like. So there's that. Um, it's called Mistfall Hunter. It crosses Souls-like and extraction games to make something brand new. So that is one to keep an eye on. Still a long ways out, though. Then we got some other stuff that I'm not familiar with. And I, I mean, I live in Colorado. If you don't know, in Colorado, like cycling is the thing it's frankly like really annoying because the people that are really into cycling have like no concern for anybody else on the road. It's, it's a stereotype at this point, but stereotypes are in the case of cyclists often true where they'll just be like riding alongside the highway and then swerving into the lane where there's cars going 75 miles an hour. And then they look at you like you're the, the jerk. If you happen to like try to get around them quickly, cause they're like, I was riding here. Come on, man. It's so infuriating. I I would like to think I am an open-minded and accepting person. But I am crew is now a member. I can't Love handle cyclists, man. man. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. Thank you, Corkscrew. Appreciate you. Love your content. Love you, my friend. As long as you're not a cyclist. <laughs> In that case, we're gonna have problems. I just can't. I just can't. But Legend of Babu, that's a thing. 505, this, spooky scary, this is one I've seen going around on social media. This um, is striking like both Black Myth vibes and it's also striking some, what else would I say? N not quite Neo. It's much more bloody. Like I, I it, it, oh, that was very wet. But it's it's hitting the vibe for me. This one I'm intrigued by. Yeah, maybe Sekiro, you could say.
She can kick me all day long. I bet you see what I mean though? Like high production value really seems to be uh, very, very impressive, at least on the graphics front. How it plays is another question, but I at the very least find this intriguing. Dare I say intriguing. <laughs> Mommy Jimothy uppies, now how dare you? I can't believe Jor ditched the podcast to play Sparking Zero. He I know, must man. be really enjoying it. I know, man. He he must be. <laughs> he's out. Of, he's out of control. You're gonna have to have a talk with him. So, Jor, we know what's happening. Have you guys ever had a friend do that though? Where like they back out of your scheduled game night. You were gonna hop on at say 8 p.m. and play some games together, and then like I just sorry, man. Something came up, but they forget to hide their Steam like activity. And you see them boot up a different game. I have one friend that I caught somebody doing that. Broke my heart. I, I don't even remember what we were going to play. It was it was something like something stupid, like Overwatch or something. But he's like, yeah, sorry. And, and it was like a specific excuse. It was like me and the missus got into a big fight or something. Like it sounded serious. And then I looked and he like he was playing a different game that he was addicted to with a different friend. And I was like, oh, okay, there you go. Broke my heart. Broke my heart. Is this control? Funny you should say that. This game, yeah, pivoting off that because that, it's making me sad. Uh, <laughs> pivoting off of that, it's funny you mentioned control because they are using particle effects that look very similar to control, aren't they? I wonder why this studio could be using something like that. Well, you remember there were reports that remedy was working on a brand new a brand new multiplayer game that they hoped would bring some profitability because again alan wake 2 has still not turned a profit really solid game still not profitable which is wild but it still isn't but this is that multiplayer game so there's even little shots where you can see them using like i don't know what you call it like the little rainbow sort of uh, particle effect. Maybe I can see it up here because I saw one shot where it's like, that's straight control. Yeah, th there was some of it. I think it's like a lens flare thing they use occasionally. Yeah, like right there. Not many other games I've seen do this. They have this cool like chromatic aberrated rainbow effect for certain particles and lens flares and it's very very unique and i haven't seen really anybody else do it but it's funny that we can see this here again but uh it's coming next year they say wish list now uh, like it doesn't look bad honestly it just doesn't look particularly like I don't know. It, it just doesn't look particularly interesting. It's a three player co op game. All the post it notes. Yeah, that's straight up control. But it's, I just, I, I don't know. Again, like it's such a competitive market. I wish him the best of luck, but I, I just, I don't know, man. I just don't see anything here that's like, wow, I cannot get that anywhere else. You know, maybe it's phenomenal. Maybe, maybe it's like super, super good. And it's kind of like, uh, deadlock or whatever and it's just so good that everybody wants to play because it it's just that good but based on what i'm seeing here it's like eh, it doesn't look bad but new live service games need to be better than not bad or even pretty good to be successful most of the time especially because i imagine this has been pretty expensive to put together just based on how it looks but that's coming uh it's their first multiplayer game offering so they're doing that and then they do this little thing and thanks for watching. That's what they got. So some fun announcements, some actual like reveals, but all told it wasn't like there wasn't a ton of meat on the bone, which I think is okay. I don't think they were pretending as though there was going to be that much, but I think my major takeaways is that Kronos looks interesting. The Mistfall, this game looks really interesting and I'll be keeping a close eye on this one. And beyond that, of course, uh, the mouse game looks solid. I'm interested in that. And then, of course, the insanity that is Yakuza will always be intriguing to me. But all told, solid show, especially for being something that kind of came out of nowhere. And it's just partner previews and stuff. I think that it once again affirms that next year is going to be insane. So if you were worried about your wallet, now you should be terrified. So buckle up. 
What about Subnautica 2? I, I just, I didn't see anything in that that gave me any real specifics other than like, oh, maybe co-op, I guess. But there wasn't really anything there for me to to latch on to. If they eventually show gameplay and stuff, then there will be something to talk about. But right now I'm just like, it's the problem with cinematic trailers. It just doesn't give you a good idea of much of anything. You're like, maybe, you know, there, there's just not much. But uh, I think it's solid a solid show for what it's trying to do. If they had framed it as having like being an Xbox showcase, then of course we'd be disappointed because we'd be like, well, where's all your other stuff? But being a partner preview that they clarified was going to be shorter, uh, I think they did a solid job there. He took my thing.